Let me welcome you to the smoke box. Windows up, couple in rotation, hot box out. Welcome back to another episode of the Be Real TV Smoke Box. I am Dr. Green Thumb, aka Be Real, here with my good friend and legend and pioneer. I mean, there's a lot of labels this man can go under. Very good things, Mr. Steve D'Angelo. One plant, one people, one truth. We all share the same destiny, and I'm here to tell you, brothers and sisters, today that that destiny is victory. You've been requested in this box, you know, like no other. People have often, you know, hit me up saying you need to have Steve D'Angelo in the box. And here you are. Here I am. <laughs> Great place to be. Oh, yes. I'll tell you, man, I need to be in the box after the day I've had. I've been at a conference all day, meetings, pitches. It's I'm whirlwind for you right now. It is. And the reason being is because of this book right here cannabis manifesto like i mean amongst all your endeavors i mean and and some of them are unprecedented i mean you know the harbor side um is just a, it's like a monument in california to me you know what i mean this was the first place that actually showed how it should be done i mean the first time i was taken into that building with my man chang weisberg gorilla union, gorilla union it blew me away the way that you had that going on and I had so much respect and then I know the history of, of the things that you've done as an activist but now we got this here book we got the book cannabis manifesto what what didn't I mean I, I could ask you what inspired you to write it but I know but like out of all like you had so much shit going on when did you find the time well I just had to stop doing everything else that I was doing for about six months and totally focus on doing the book because I knew it was a really important thing to do. Why did I write it? Because it's time to pour a big barrel of gasoline on this fire that we've been building for a while. It's time to blow this thing up and get it done. I was at this investment conference all day today talking to people about making a lot of money off of cannabis. Yesterday, I got a letter from my buddy Chuck. He's in prison in, Cal in Pennsylvania for making money off of cannabis, right? Hmm. So uh, we got to get this thing done. Yeah, and, you know, I, and I think people are more open-minded these days. Even people, well, obviously, people in our culture, we're always open-minded to it. I mean, we're the ones fighting for it. The freedom fighters, as they've often called, you know, our culture, you know, pushing towards legalization. But I believe that now there's, there's the person who is like, you know more um sympathetic to the cause that they're not necessarily smokers but they see the potential in, in the help that it could give medically and economically and that's where you come in you're i mean a lot of information a lot of education is is coming in this book and it's you know pulling the veils off kind of like uh like emperor wears no clothes did in in, in in a different sort of way in the modern time like right now with all these social networks yeah, it's you know it's a, it's a, it's a new time and a new era. It's been 30 years since yeah. Jack Herrer wrote The Emperor Wears No Clothes. And that was a phenomenal book. It like reset taught a lot of us a lot, you know, everything. Yeah. Right? It's, it totally changed the way we ourselves looked at cannabis, right? Right. But now 30 years have gone by. A lot of new science, a lot of new history, a lot of new political developments. Right. So I felt like it was time to really up, update all of that. Yeah, and I think I think coming from you it validates it. It, it it gives it so much validation because I mean the, the, the years of activism that you put into it uh, you know pushing legalization pushing decriminalization and all that stuff and um, you know as well as putting yourself on the line and creating you know one of the first major collectives I mean that 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 was that's all like a big deal i mean because a lot of people saw what you were doing and said we need to do it like steve and you even you know offered to teach people these things you know like show them the way to make this right and i think a lot of people in denver you know probably came in and, and took the took the notes on what you were doing down there but i still think that even though they're legal your place is the one that's ran the most legitimate like to me like the way that it should be like it's flowing inviting and then you have all those different flavors there and just the organization of it is it's amazing well thanks but you know what i what i wanted to do there 
uh, was realize this dream that I've always had of creating an environment for cannabis that was really worthy of how amazing that this plant is, like a temple, right. a temple for cannabis. That's what it feels like. And it feels secure. You know, back in the time when I first went down there, it felt dodgy to go in some of these places. But the way that you had it arranged and organized and the vibe, it was inviting and it felt like, hey, you know, it feels right to be in here. And I think that that's that's some shit that a lot of these these guys can learn. But, you know, I think it takes to read this book and to learn about the man who, who invested the time in research. How, how long did it, how long was the research for this book, like, you know, that you had to do before you actually put it all together? Oh, like 40 years, right? 40 you know, it's been years. my whole lifetime. Yeah, the whole lifetime, you know? right? Uh, but the, the really intense research and writing, I got all done in about six months. And the amazing thing was, I actually changed my own mind about some of the things that I thought about cannabis in the course of writing the book. Because yeah, I, I just, I got a chance to re dig really, really deep. So right. it, was, you know, it was a learning experience for me too. Well, what, what do you think is the, the most, the, the, the chapter that you look at, like that they can, that they can get the most from, like that, that is gonna blow their fucking mind yeah, so um, I think that for people who are already into cannabis, well, maybe even for people who aren't into cannabis, the most original idea is in chapter four. And, uh, and that's where I lay out what I call my wellness theory, right? Right. And wellness theory goes something like this. Um, uh, you know, people come up to me at different conferences all the time. Right. And they'll say something to me like, man, I totally support what you're doing with patients, you know, right on great work me I smoke weed too but I'm not a patient I'm not right. sick right I just like to get high right. right so then I talk to them I ask them some questions right so when do you get high why do you smoke how does it make you feel what benefits is it bringing to your life how is your life different now that you're using cannabis right and they'll say something to me like well before cannabis I get off of work I'd be tired maybe pissed off at my boss maybe frustrated I, you know, got a sour stomach, my back would be hurting, I'd be frustrated in rush hour traffic. Didn't really feel like going home and playing with my right. kids or telling my wife what a lousy day I had. Food didn't taste, taste very good. You know, my stomach was upset after dinner. I'd sit down in the easy chair, crash out in front of the TV, right. wake up in the middle of the night and go in bed to a pissed off wife. Right? The hustle but, and bustle. <laughs> right? You know, and that's many people's that's lives. many people, that's, right? you know? yeah. But with cannabis, my stomach's not sour. I'm not frustrated. I'm not pissed off at the end of the day. My Always back relaxed. isn't hurting, right? I'm looking forward to getting home. And playing with my kids is more fun for me than it is for them, right? right? It doesn't matter how bad my day is. Reuniting with my wife is a real moment of tenderness and joy. Right. The meal always tastes good. My digestion's great. After bed, we, after dinner, we put the kids to bed. You have a little extra special intimate time. Word. I sleep a sound night. I wake up in the morning. I'm ready to go. Right? I'm well. I'm well. Right? <laughs> now, the same person goes to a doctor and gives them that story. The doctor's like, oh, anxiety, insomnia, erectile dysfunction, acid reflux, a whole list of diseases, right? right? You turn on the TV to every that night. Over, over the counter bullshit to deal with something they don't even have. Well, not even the over the counter bullshit. You look on television every night and you see a whole fucking parade of commercials, yeah. right? That are talking about anxiety and depression and acid reflux and rheumatoid arthritis. And they got a list of side effects like something out of a Stephen King novel. Like right? 60 fucking side effects. Right. Liver failure, <laughs> suicidal ideation, Sometimes possible death, possible cancer. Death, yes. You know? Yeah, it's uh, ridiculous. For stuff that's supposed to make your eyes brighter, right? right. So for most people, this this is the safe, natural alternative. So that so in that chapter, the, the wellness, it's basically... Instead of getting high, you're getting well. You're getting well, like, so there's all these overlooked wellness benefits, right? I right. call them overlooked wellness. Sparking your creativity, right? Enhancing the flavor of a meal, or the touch of your lover's skin, or the sound of music, it, extending it, your sense of patience. You know what, it does, in fact, heighten those senses. Mm -hmm. I don't think it, it, it heightens reaction time. Like, something physical like that, I don't think it, you know, because in, in some sports, they consider it uh, an, uh, a banned substance, substance because it could possibly 
could possibly be a performance enhancer drugs. Now, I, I don't think that applies to athletes in, in you know in their ability to get on, on 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 the shit. I think it's within focus. Like I think you could focus better on certain things, but something physical like that, I think it might take you back a little bit you know what i mean depends on who you are depends on who you are and what kind of cannabis you're using now remember back in the day right there was like two kinds of cannabis the kind you had and the kind you couldn't get right, right. You and know? i'm glad you're breaking this down because rookies wouldn't know this type of thing that's how it was been the day but now what we've learned is that there's like 400 different chemical compounds in the cannabis plant that can affect the human body right and each one of them is different right so depending on on which ratio of those compounds you've got in the particular batch of cannabis that you're using it can have one effect or a different effect right, right. some's more of, of a physical effect where mm -hmm. you're feeling euphoric but like in your physical sense and then the other affects the head right the brain it, so it's a little heavier exactly so get this we've got folks who are using thca right thca right. is the natural form of thc in the plant unless you heat it up it's not going to get you high. It's not going to have any kind of mind effect on you, right? Right. It's still a really powerful bronco dilator. It opens up your lungs mm. and your and your blood vessels. People with asthma and such. So it actually is a performance enhancer for some athletes. Mm. Ryan Miller, right? Um, an incredible veteran who works at, at Harborside, has come in first or second in a number of marathons while using THC. Do you think it it affects like fighters? Like, you know, like in the UFC or the boxing and stuff like that. Because one fighter just got suspended for five years because they found THC in his his, his, uh, his blood system, you know, in his I don't blood test. I don't see THC as being a performance enhancer for not, fighters. Not in that right? arena. Not yeah, in that arena. That's what I'm saying. I think, like, for some things, yes. yes. For some people, some athletes. And, yeah. But I don't know about fighting because no, your that's... reaction time might be a little slow but i don't even think they they're looking at it on that end i think that they the the judges there or the refs or whoever it is making the call on that on the commission really thinks that that's something that, in, that that's going to improve their performance in the ring and you know that i think that the suspension is too harsh oh it's it's bullshit okay uh um first of all he wasn't spliffing up before he went into no. the ring okay he was spliffing up after he got out of the ring because he was all beat up okay right. we all know that okay right. so that's that's ridiculous, okay? And and they have probably the kind of testing technology they had. They couldn't determine when, at what time, yeah. he consumed the cannabis. Because most of the done. tests, it can range anywhere from you know thirty days to one hundred and twenty. Took me a, took me one hundred and twenty days when I got arrested and they started piss testing me. It took one hundred and twenty days for my urine to come clean. Wow. It only stayed clean for a day or two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You know how it goes. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're medicating most of the time. We're getting well. You know, we're spending our time getting well and taking care of things, handling business. I mean, you know, the, I think the stereotypes of what our culture is have been broken and redefined because there's a lot of people that are out there actually making moves and uh, doing progressive things and showing that they're responsible with taxpayers and you know they can conduct business and whatnot I think they're looking at the culture a, a lot different and that's where you're getting a lot of hedge fund people in involved in in this particular culture now yep and, and uh, I mean I think that's due to the flag you've been you know raising for years showing people how it's done and I want to thank you for that well, thank you. Thanks for the appreciation. You know, I've had a great time doing it. Right on, man. Before we go, this is always the last question in the smoke box. And I mean, you know, you you are uh, you have many flavors that come into play when it, when it comes into the stoner's life. What is your favorite flavor that you like to blaze up? Right now, yeah, uh, it's got to be Tony Verzora's Turp Juice. Ooh, the Turp Juice. So you know, you're doing the concentrates as well. Oh yeah, and I'm, I'm uh, my flavor of the hour is as a solvent-free extract, um, uh, dipped in a nice turp juice. Nice. Hit on an e nail. Hit on an e nail. <laughs> now my favorite strain of all time, Neville's Original Haze. Neville's Original Haze, and you carry that at Harbor Side, right? I Sometimes. don't think that I can say with 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 certainty that we have ever had Neville's Original Haze at Harbor Side. Yeah, that everybody. Is <laughs> Everybody always attaches their their shitty weed to a label sometimes, and you know they lie about the strain, and one can never really know. Yeah, right? I don't think that honestly, I don't think I've smoked 
Neville's original haze in a good 20 years plus. Yeah, I've, I, I've, I've only ever heard about it. Hey, I want to thank you for taking the time. Great to be here. Coming Thanks in the smoke me. box. My man Steve D'Angelo, legend. Fucking, I mean, there's too many labels to, to, to describe this man. So I'm going to stay with legend <laughs> and teacher. Thank you. you know what I mean? And uh, you mean a lot to this culture, man. And, and you being in this box is a great thing. And you guys got to learn about this guy. If you don't know about him, you take the time and educate yourself because you can learn a lot from this man right here. Leave your comments. Subscribe to the channel. Any things you want to say in parting? Watch Be Real TV. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> right. Let me welcome you to the smoke box. Smoke box. Windows up, couple in rotation. Hot boxed out.